Da -da 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 we are live. Hey guys, so check it out. First, some admin. We're gonna go through a few knives that I have on eBay right now. Check these out. Beautiful, and just below here, you can't see this. Um, I could actually just tip the camera right quick. I have some incredible swords and cool things I wanna go through. Just incredible stuff, just too much to put in the uh, uh, comment section and or uh, title. So real quick, these will be in the link below. Any of my videos have my eBay link. Case knife from the 80s up on eBay right now. This one is from my collection, so it really has some nice walk and talk. And I have two Bulldogs, incredible Bulldogs. These are all made with original parts. This one's, I think, fifth generation. This one is either first or second. Check out the swedge on that. Just really nice, really nice knives. And then if you go to my Facebook page, I have these beauties back up there. And these are those More Maker Seconds that I have. They're basically, I think they're better because they're like one of a kinds. And they're just so sweet. And I got those on my Facebook page. If you look at my last video, um, I have some links down there. It goes to my Facebook page and then it also goes to my eBay listings. But check this out. I also have some really cool stuff on eBay. Let me, um, I'll point you guys over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. I got my little computer over here. So I'm gonna see if I can actually I'm gonna mute it. Okay, great, yeah, just below this video, we actually have, excuse me, I'm actually in my pajamas. <laughs> this is awesome. And um, I can actually watch myself. I got, let me bring up the chat too. And if you guys want to chat, we can. Cool. Okay, cool. Looks like we got two people. All right, so uh, got that admin out of the way. These are also some things I have on eBay right now. This is an M Mark I, and I'm not a bayonet guy by any form, but I have a ton of bayonets. You know me, I gotta have every, look at this beauty. Oh yeah. And this particular bayonet was manufactured in 1919. This sucker's a hundred years old in relatively fantastic condition. And this is what our US troops would use Our bayonets, basically, to give you an idea, um, you had your Mark Ones. Your original ones looked, came in a leather case like this. Let me see if I can bring this up so you guys can really see this. Can you guys hear me good? I mean, you guys give me a thumbs up or something. Um, so your original ones had your leather cases. Uh, wood handles, really shiny, beautiful swords. Really nice size. Because back then, we were fighting the Japanese. And I actually have a Japanese example, but the Japanese example is about the same size as this. And then we went to something along the lines of this fiberglass and the quality it looks like dropped just a little bit and the handle is not quite as nicely done and they wanted something that could lock in 
so it locks, so it won't come out. And then it's independent from the sheath. They had problems with some of the fiberglass sheaths breaking. I know a little bit on that. I'm not gonna go too much into that. Um, this particular one is on eBay now currently. So, so eventually um, we went into the war and they, and they said, uh-uh, you're not going to come over to Europe with those big shiny things. You need to paint them black. So they went with black. Right? Then they started shortening them. So then they started shortening by six inches about. So, so you'll find a lot of these Mark I's shortened, right? And they'll either be brought to a point, right? Or they'll be brought like a clip, like a clip point. And that was determined on whether, what type it was. Um, because you can see some of them get too thin there to do the points. I'm not going to go too much into that. Um, so after we stopped shortening them, we went into the current bayonet, well not the current, but something that everybody's more familiar with. And that would be your, just your typical, actually the original ones didn't have this, this is from the Korean War. And that's because they wanted something for their gloves, something, so, so for the winter, it'd be really easy to remove this, which this is. And that's all blacked out. So, hey Kate, how's it going? Thanks for the thumbs up, I appreciate that. And now, now you're thinking like, what's with these swords? Why did we have these swords? I mean, why uh, did we really stab people? I mean, kill people in war with swords? So, because a lot of people talk about civil war and like what we're gonna do. Well, we, we, we used to actually have real bayonets. I have a bunch of examples, but I don't have them here. But to keep it kind of current, this is the current stuff. Now we could go to a little bit Civil War. So in the Civil War, they had horses. So <clears throat> the cavalry would carry something like this. And now this is not an original scabbard, but the sword is original. So let's check that out. First of all, before I open it up, that is leather wrapped with copper wire. This one's stamped 59. And it has a leather washer, kind of like a samurai sword kind of thing. And this is a real sword. This is the real deal. So let's bring this out. Um, this sword is very long, sharp, and dangerous. Now something like this would not be used on the ground. Most guys are not my size. They wouldn't be able to wield something like this um, as effective as someone like myself. Um, most, a lot of times this would drag on the ground when they carried it. And that's because most people back then, you know, they weren't six foot, you know, 220 pounds. They'd be on their horse and they would lock in their, lock in their thumb like that, like so. And this is the model 1960. There is a model 1940 and then Cold Steel kind of kind of just confuses everything by calling their 1960 the heavy cavalry sword. This is not the heavy cavalry sword. The heavy cavalry sword is a straight sword that's straight. And they called it the wrist breaker. It was a heavy sword, heavier than this, straight, and had a tendency to break your wrist when you used it. This one is your light cavalry sword, <laughs> some light sword, right? And what it was used for was when you're on the horse, you would lock your thumb in, you, would lo you could lock this in, and you could s basically stab people as you ran with your cavalry charge. As you kept galloping, the slight curve would allow you to release your blade. So you could stab and go. You're stabbing and whew, flying. Pew, pew, pew. And that's what it was made for. That's the design of the blade. It wasn't designed to go up against maybe an artillery sword, right? But at the same time, if you knew how to use this sucker, you know, so um, this is an artillery sword. These are very popular. Um, 
we'll look at that next. But this is a very cool sword, uh, very nice looking sword, as you can see, very large. And you can see that, that expands, I'm a very large dude, and that spans the entire length. Look at that sucker. Woo! And that's war, guys. Something to think about. So this goes like so. Now, my next example, I have a foot artillery sword. All right. And the foot artillery sword's pretty cool. Check this bad boy out. Now, what are those blood grooves for? You guys know what those blood grooves are for? All right, I'll tell you guys a little bit about how swords, all this stuff is developed over time and in response to what's needed. So if, uh, it depends what the enemy had, right? And what this was used for but this would be something that would be used as a tool at times maybe to dig out holes but at the same time it's something that you could use for hand-to-hand -hand combat uh, for me this is very light for someone that's not very strong it would be a heavy thing to wield um, my wife has trouble picking this thing up this one is the improved version with the rivets one two three they added these rivets because the brass handle decides to get a little bit uh, loose after being hammered or misused. With the rivets, problem was alleviated. You have the maker's marks, the inspector's marks stamped in different locations, and you also have this beautiful design on the pommel. Um, you have some light marking, Springfield Armory, and these blood grooves. So what are the blood grooves? Blood grooves are to what? Loose, uh, lighten the blade, right? And so that's to lighten the blade up and to strengthen it. So not only does it lighten the blade, but it strengthens the blade. So that is a tech, technology, if you will, that would really benefit a military unit. What do I mean by that? Um, so if you had an army of 1,000 people, so so... Now, now you got to realize that this is, they had other, they had muskets and other things like that. But let's look back at like Troy or like way back in history, you know, sword technology. Training's important, but when it came to training and people and nutrition, a lot of armies were very evenly matched. What the benefit was, was technology. Imagine... A thousand people on one side with a sword that has no blood grooves. And on the other side, you have a thousand people with swords with blood grooves. And technologies like this are time proven. It's something that they kind of ran in with like medieval times and all that stuff. That's because those thousand people that have the blood grooves will have a lighter, faster sword, right? And a stronger sword. And when you... When you take it on, a, on an individual basis, it's not a huge advantage. Matter of fact, maybe the heavier sword might be better in some circumstances. On an individual basis, you probably wouldn't notice. But with a thousand people, you're gonna notice. And it's gonna make a difference. And little itty bitty bits of technology like that is what propelled certain uh, civilizations ahead of others. It could, be, it could be something as simple as a blood groove. It could be something as simple as we know how to shoot arrows while riding a horse. Something like that. So just wanted to kind of dabble in some kind of interesting history stuff. All right. Oh, and then before that, we had the Craig. This is a Swiss model. The Craig was before all these uh, this is a beautiful. Uh, the problem with the Craig looks cool, huh? You're like, I want that one. That one's way better than those. Yeah, I know. Check out this blade on this sucker. Beautiful, right? So what's the problem? Well, too short. Wasn't long enough to go against the Japanese. Um, and then also, metal. 
kind of cool for us. Oh, you could hit someone with it. Yeah, you could dent it. You could drop it on a rock. Now you can't get your, oh, you're done. You can't walk around with this. You can't sheathe your knife, you're in a real problem. All right, so they got rid of that. Plus it had a problem with rusting too. So you'd have some problem with dissimilar metals coming in contact um, and all that. But what seemed like a pretty good idea uh, wasn't. Um, yeah, it looks cool though. And noisy. Here I am, here I am, here we come. Benefits of a brass pommel. Soft, so your enemy's blade can get stuck or at least it will absorb the impact a little bit better than maybe a steel to steel impact. So I don't know, I'm not a sword guy, but kind of interesting stuff. Whew, man, this thing is bitching. These, these things, all right, so how much do these things cost? What, what, what do these things go for? These are about uh, anywhere from 12 to $2,000 currently. And that, this is a foot soldier's artillery sword. Uh, this one is currently about $1,000 estimated, if not a little bit more, maybe 15. And I'm not a pro. Look at that, isn't that awesome? That's a real sword. See how thick that is? Looks thin because it's so long. That is a thick, thick blade. This is a lot of material here. Look at the end. I'm not afraid of nicking that. That is an absolute beast of a blade. Um, what, what does it feel like? It feels a little awkward in the hand, but when you realize what it's for, okay, I could see that. Could I chop a watermelon in half? Oh yeah, easy. I think just dropping this, would it would sail right through a watermelon. Um, could I cut through some rope? Oh yeah, easy. Just kind of like, uh, the leverage is really good. I think your recovery would be hard to get control of this large thing, but I think the initial swipe, you'd take an arm off for sure. So it's, uh, it's interesting when you handle something like this. I mean, it's not nice to think about stuff like this, but uh, yeah, you know, it can be. Uh, that's just the way the world used to be. Now in the 1970s, we had swords that went on people's walls and you could get your, um, uh, well, I'll just show it to you. And these are about two to $300. And it's, a, it's more of like an officer's sword, uh, something that wouldn't be used in battle, more of a symbolic sword. And this one's kind of cool. And I like that. It's got a nice little tip on it. And it's got some really pretty bone. And I actually have some tape so it doesn't get any more damage done to it. Beauty. It's really pretty, actually. Nice. All right, guys. So that's really it. Um, I wanted to show off my knives. Please go to my eBay, which is just below this video I'm looking at right now. eBay, we have Facebook there, uh, some other things. Uh, Liam, Kate, thank you so much for the comment. It, it makes it feel like I'm not you know, here. Um, what's up? I, I see someone, Jersey Knife Guy. What's up, bud? What's the hot piece to pick up? Uh, right now, the hot piece to pick up is on my eBay account. Actually, no, go to my Facebook. And I have these three. And these are those more makers. They're $50 a pop to your front door. I said 120 for all three. 120 you get all of them to your front door, man. These are beautiful, man. These are full-size trappers. Look at those. Beauties. And then if you're into, oh, these are those westerns that I love so much. I got a set of westerns for sale on the Facebook page. And then on eBay, got a case, 
but you're competing with everybody else, you know. Um, this one will probably sell, I'm thinking, for about $40, $50. It's well worth it. You might want to check out this. I got a few Bulldogs that I am going to put up for sale, and I also have some special ones. You hear that snap? I want that. Uh, which war maker you want? You want that red one? I'll save it for you. You want it for 50, it's yours. 50 bucks. I put those on eBay all day long. Those are the three best that I had. So remember, I sold all those on eBay, about 50 of them, right? They sold from 40 to $50 a pop on eBay uh, every time, all day long. And um, yeah, these are the best of the three. The red one's really nice. It's really slick and red. It's nice. So yeah, if you want to, just shoot me a, on my Facebook and uh, we'll PayPal. Or you can just PayPal it to my email account and then I'll just send it to the address or whatever. Just tell me what you want. So, and usually my email address is where my dog's knives is. If you go to one of my other, uh, my last video, it has my e email right there usually. That's weird. Yeah. This live thing's kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, that's a good one. And then this one is a little bit ugly, but it, boy, it is funky. If you're like a tough dude, this is like a translucent like bone, man. It is just... Wicked, and it's got like, like two shields, one on each side, and that's fifty bucks too. They're all unused, but you know they're they're seconds. So like, what do you mean by a second? A, a more maker is typically about eighty bucks, if not more, eighty to one hundred dollars. So like, you, you're looking at a knife. They usually polish the edge a little bit. This these don't have polished edges. These are more like a case knife that's like forty five dollars. Like a, you know what I'm saying. Uh, the more makers are typically, you know, like I have a more maker, it's stag and that thing cost me 140 bucks and it's just like these, except for it's got a little bit more polish to it, you know, just a little bit. And if you want, but for me, like I said, it feels like a case knife. It just doesn't feel like a queen knife or a, or an $80 knife. It feels like a $50 knife and that's why I'm selling for 50 bucks. But, oh yeah. But yeah, I was, I'm enjoying all this stuff. I really like this sheath on this one right here. That's just gorgeous. And I have all the guns that go to these too, which is nice. Boy, that thing's beautiful. So cool, I'm gonna let you guys go. Thank you so much for enjoying my live. Thank you for the interaction. Um, man, Jersey, thanks for coming by and chatting. Uh, I'll be doing this more often. This is my knife room. Uh, I don't know, you guys, can't, you guys can't tell, but this is a long sword. I have built this room to be able to make videos. So I can actually, it's like an 11 foot ceiling above me. So that's why I can kind of spin this thing around. And uh, I am probably gonna put something behind the 